So now we have the opportunity to make effort to train our minds to overcome suffering. We have, we develop mindfulness and wisdom, and this is a type of merit that helps us in our lives, to help take care of our lives. And that which is uh, necessary for our bodies is just the four requisites. We can see that nowadays the world is uh, changing a lot. For instance, when I was young, a person of about 15 or 16 years old would be equivalent to, um, sorry, someone who's 15 or 16 year old nowadays would be equivalent to about a 20 year old from the time when I was a kid in terms of their knowledge and experience. And this is uh, because knowledge is, is easier to obtain with the internet and modern technology and individuals grow in knowledge much faster than they used to. In fact, everything is uh, moving faster nowadays. Uh, people are you know, growing in knowledge uh, much faster than they used to. And if one is intelligent, then one can learn very quickly. And some people are uh, not very interested in dhamma. They have interest in other things. And we can see this is because it's not yet their time to be interested in dhamma and they don't see suffering sufficiently to become interested in dhamma. They don't yet see dukkha. Perhaps when they grow old or meet with more suffering, then uh, that individual will show interest in dhamma. And this is simply because of delusion covering over the heart. It makes it so that one cannot see clearly, one can't see the truth of life. And because of this delusion covering the, the heart, one sees everything in terms of me, mine, you and yours. And one thinks that uh, one is equal or higher or lower than others. And this is what we call mana, or conceit. We think that oneself or another is higher or more important than another, or equal or lower. And this conceit is dukkha, it's stressful, it's suffering. Whether uh, one feels one is higher, one is equal, or one is lower, it's uh, dukkha all the same. There's one uh, example of this when I traveled to England and France. I was with Venerable Ajahn Tom, and we were going to the Versailles Museum in France. And he had a ticket to enter the, the museum. And the person checking the tickets was a woman. And it's the um, part of the monastic discipline to not uh, hand things uh, directly to a woman in Thailand. And so Ajahn Tong put down the ticket, uh, put it down on the surface in this uh, this official, this officer, was, was extremely upset. It became a, a contentious issue. And another monk uh, had to come and, and try to help. And this is uh, an example of a cultural difference. And there is another story from the same trip when riding on the train from England to France, riding under the English Channel. There was uh, another monk, Ajahn Kalyano, who uh, speaks English, so he's able to communicate with the, the local people there. And sitting on this train, there was a woman sitting very close by. And this uh, woman grabbed uh, Ajahn Kalyano's jiwan, his, his robe, his monk's robe, and asked, oh, where is this cloth from? It's, it's very nice, it's very beautiful. Uh, where did you get it from? And this is an example of a cultural difference where such behavior would be uh, 
considered very inappropriate in Thailand. But in this instance, in this different culture, um, this individual thought that the, the monk's robe was a very good uh, fashionable clothing item. So we can see that uh, cultures differ. In this uh, example, in the Western cultures, it, it's more of a thinking that individuals are equal, that everyone's the same. And if we, um, if we really look, if, uh, if things are really equal, then this is talking about the mind that's pure, the mind that is Buddha, the mind that has no dukkha. And, uh, but for individuals that have upadana, still have clinging in the mind, then they'll cling to higher, lower, equal. And so we all, uh, should try to overcome this suffering and train our minds. We're born into this situation where we have this um, the chaos and trouble of old age, sickness and death. We may meet and encounter individuals who are sick and ill and think that it's just something outside of us. And we can contemplate that this dukkha, this stress, really comes from clinging. And when one is healthy, one uh, is constantly making effort to find happiness and pleasure for oneself. And in the Buddhist time, it was the same. People, people always looking for pleasure and happiness for themselves. And it's the culture in Buddhism to train the mind to become higher. And it's also a culture of, that places an emphasis on respect and this respect makes it easier to live together in harmony. If there's no respect, then it's very difficult to, to live together. And it was uh, in the time of Lumpu Cha, Lumpu Cha, when the monks lived at Wat Nongpapam with Lumpu Cha, Lumpu Cha gave the opportunity for others to speak their ideas and views in community meetings. And there was a couple of issues that came up regarding smoking cigarettes and chewing uh, betel nut. So Mupu Chad laid down the rule that there should be no, no monk should smoke or chew betel nut. And, uh, but Lumpu Chai himself would chew betel nut, but no other monk could. And there was yeah, one individual who offered betel nut and Lumpu Chai would, would chew this. And so there's one disciple who brought this up in a meeting about Lumpu Chai uh, breaking his own rule. It was a rule that Lumpu Chai himself laid down so he'd be perfectly capable of merely uh, revoking that rule and simply allowing smoking and chewing a betel nut and actually the Perhaps the reason this disciple brought this up was because he himself wanted to smoke and chew betel nut. So he was hoping to, to obtain it for himself by bringing up the fact that Mopu Cha was breaking the rule. But instead the result was that Mopu Cha simply stopped chewing betel nut himself. And there was another instance where Mopu Sumedho was walking near Lumpu Cha's kuti and saw Lumpu Cha smoking a cigarette. And Lumpu Sumedho felt uh, that this was not appropriate or there was some, some uh, collision of views happening at this time. And Lumpu Cha uh, gave him a teaching that, well, if you, are you suffering because of the smoking or because you have clinging? And we can see that the, the suffering is actually coming from clinging, not from the fact that Lumpucha smoked a cigarette. And so these are a couple of examples from the monastery 
And in the world, this is something that's very hard to do. And there was, uh, so after this occasion, at some point, Lumpu Cha gave up uh, smoking, or there was no smoking at all in the monastery. And there was uh, an occasion where I was cleaning Lumpu Cha's kuti, and in his spittoon, there were a few cigarette butts. And I saw them in there, and it was my job to clean it out. And I thought, if, if Lumpu Cha smoked these cigarettes, what would I think? What would I, how would I feel about that? But I can see that there was no body of the cigarette. It was only the, the ends left of the cigarette. And I, I didn't actually really think anything about it. I had faith that Lumpu Cha uh, was an arahant. Whether he smoked or not smoked, there'd be no clinging all the same. So we can see this is, in a way, a test of faith to see what level one's faith is at. And one, another individual may even doubt whether Lumpu Cha was proficient in Dhamma practice or not, or whether he had attained any uh, superior human state or not. So seeing the, the cigarette, but if you think about it, it could be that Lumpu Cha put those in there just as a teaching or it could be that he simply burnt the, the body of the cigarette without actually smoking it. Or it could be that he actually smoked it himself. But at the time, I didn't um, think about this. I didn't proliferate about it. However, there was another monk who uh, didn't believe that Mungu Cha refrained from smoking. And this, uh, this monk who is doubting about Mungu Cha was in his kuti at one point in Lumpu Cha. He heard Lumpu Cha say to him, uh, don't, don't think that, that's, that's bad karma. And this monk covered his ears, um, and yet he could still hear Lumpu Cha's voice uh, teaching him this. And no matter what he did to cover his ears, he would still hear Lumpu Cha's voice. And so he really uh, came to the conclusion that, oh, Lumpu Cha really knows my mind really knows what I'm thinking. And this monk later related this story to me, and I wasn't uh, terribly surprised because I already had uh, great faith in Lung Pucha's abilities and skills as a teacher. So nowadays we see that the world is developing more and more, and religions uh, need to adjust so we have, we endeavor to have loving kindness and compassion uh, together to one another. And the student and teacher should have uh, loving kindness uh, to each other as well. For instance, with new monks and their teacher should have a mind of loving kindness to each other. And in the time of COVID-19, the world was changing uh, even more than usual. So may we endeavor to study and accept the truth. Accept the truth that the body is something that we can't control. It's something of the nature to change, stressful, and not a self, not a me, not a mind. And we see that we don't want pain, we don't want suffering, we don't want death. And yet these bodies simply follow their nature. Their nature is to become ill, grow old and die. So the body just follows the causes and conditions. So may we contemplate this well. May you grow in blessings.